So hey there everybody, as always, welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping around and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich, I'm the channel host, and nine times out of 10, we're gonna be talking about building my small drone business and your small drone business. We do provide tips and tricks and sometimes tutorials. Today, this isn't a tutorial, but I wanted to take you through the process. We've shown viewers here some of what goes into creating these custom web page deliverables that we do for our clients. And today we went out and captured some video and yesterday we were out doing video. So the past few days have been video, video, video and stills as well. So lots of flights. And I would like to complete my newest solstice project, which is from the 15th yesterday. And what I've got up here right now on screen is the solstice project, October 1st. So that one's already been completed and paid on by the clients. So what we're gonna do today is I'm actually gonna walk through some of the video setup. So before I do that though, before I get too far ahead of myself, let's just scroll down here. So normally deliverables for this particular project, we do a video uh, video setup that is also time lapsable. So we do the same flight over and over again. So we can make before and after videos uh, for the clients, or we can just make the latest updates, which is what we've been doing for these folks lately. They just like to see the newest. In addition to the video, we also do before and after ortho mosaics. So we use web ODM or MetaShape to generate our ortho mosaic models. And then we can overlay last week's and this week's kind of thing to show people what's changed on site. We also do package a 3D model since we're flying the M3E now. Um, it's much quicker to get the 3D models done as well. And we also do a series of still images so that they can actually see each home's uh, stage in its progression. But today, what we're gonna do, because we don't wanna sit around waiting on WebODM or MetaShape, I'll do that off, off camera, and loading up the still images, that's another thing we do, but uh, we don't have to do that one today. I was recently asked about you know some of our video editing, and so I just wanted to take you through the video edit for yesterday's flight and um, how we set this up. We're not gonna take you through the whole thing because it'll get boring. Um, Beware, this will probably go a little longer because I'm talking you through all of the steps on what we're doing. So what I'm going to do today on screen with you is generate the October 15th video that will normally go up for our presentations for our clients. With that said, we're gonna uh, minimize the solstice here. And in the background, we've got Final Cut. So I edit with Final Cut. And here is our flight work from yesterday. So the first two folders, um, I already know what they are, Solstice Poly 2 and Solstice Poly. These are for our ortho mosaics and 3D models. So if I open this up, we're gonna see a lot of JPEGs. Um, 211 plus the other couple hundred on the other one, so over 400 images. We then have two different flight paths that we've created months and months and months ago before we ever got our hands on the Mavic 3E. We're using the Mavic 2 Pro and the Phantom 4 Pro with Litchi to do some of our flight videos that are repeatable. So we have the Solstice 98 feet, and if you can't guess it, uh, we did that with 98 feet off the ground. Then we have the Solstice 30 feet as well. And then finally, these other two folders were for some testing that I was doing with the Mavic 3 Enterprise, um, doing live mission recordings of you know still images where I want them. So the live mission recording was my setup for a, uh, a mission test. And then the waypoint one is actually following the waypoints. We're not gonna get into those today. The first thing that we're gonna get into is that Solstice 98 feet. So I'm just gonna open that one up and there's the video. What I'm gonna do now is switch screens and I am in Final Cut Pro and I'm going to my Final Cut Pro library over here the Solstice Project 2023. And when I open that one up, oh boy, there's just a couple of um, <laughs> a couple of setups in here. So I will be archiving these at the end of the year and making a new library for the client as well. But we are now up to flight number, to official flight number 24. So I'm just gonna copy this. And now after I've copied it, I'm going to go up and we're gonna do a new event. And what I'd like to do here is we're gonna do 24. So this is just labeling for me, by the way. You can label things as you see fit for your stuff too. But here we go. Just get rid of that last one. 
And so there is an identifiable piece of information for me right there, solstice, uh, 24 solstice, and that we're doing this on October 16th. So that looks good. We're going for 30 frames a second, 1920 by 1080. And since, you know, these aren't super cinematic or anything for the clients, this is just to show build progress. Now, as this uh, goes along and the homes get completed, we will be doing more cinematic work around those homes because we're going to be doing buyer pages as well. So private buyer links as well. Uh, and I'm just going to double check this, make sure I hit copy on that, say OK. And now I'm looking back over into that Solstice library. There it is, 24 Solstice. And as you can see, there's nothing in here yet. For the project name, that's why I did a copy and paste. So now the project name is 24 Solstice 10 16 23. There we go. We're ready to get started. Now, for my higher end videos, I usually use another program called Kino for managing things. However, since we've got this down to such a um, you know, we've got a regular workflow for doing this. It goes very quickly. I don't need to use many features over in Kino. So in this case, we're just going to be dragging and dropping from the folder that I have here for that flight. So this is the 98 foot flight. And we're just going to drag this over and in to Final Cut. And there we go. Like now we can get into the Final Cut screen. Tell you what, I will, or no, we'll actually leave that screen right there. So this is the first flight. This is the first video flight of the day that we did at this particular project location. And I always have it set up first. So my first waypoint isn't dead on. I have it fly to the waypoint and then move to the second waypoint where now it starts capturing. So with the waypoint mission, we have where the drone is pointing. So it could be heading this way, but it's actually looking to the north. So it's one of the things that I like with Litchi mission setups, and I'm still having some problems with the um, DJI Pilot 2 app doing this easily. So what we're looking at are the results of an original Litchi mission actually first. Uh, Litchi for M3s is not available yet but I actually found a way to convert some of my Litchi Mission Hub stuff um, into usable information on the Mavic 3E. All right, now let's just take a look here. So this is where, as it starts to make that first curve, that's where we would like to split this. So I am using Final Cut Pro, so I'm hitting B for the blade, and now I'm hitting A to get back to my uh, clickable mouse, and I'm deleting that section because what we want to do is we actually want to start from here. Now this is moving along a little slow as we're looking at this and the clients don't have all day to sit around and um, watch the video. So usually we'll double up the speed on this one. And so that's very easy. I'm gonna stop right here. I'm just gonna click. So as you can see, this, uh, this timeline here is highlighted with a yellow box around it. And what I can do is I can actually speed this one up. So I'm gonna go over here and hit 2x speed. And so that just cut down a lot of time, but now this is gonna be cruising by us faster. We're not gonna go through this whole clip. Um, we do have another clip to do as well, but I just wanted to give you the idea of, you know, after we return uh, from the field, these are some of the steps we're taking. So today we're just talking about taking some video steps. All right, and you do not have to use uh, just Final Cut. Uh, DaVinci Resolve will work well, so will Premiere Pro. So it's up to you, whatever platform you're using. But all of these things do give us the opportunity to speed things up or slow things down. So like I said, in our case, we're speeding things up. So I'm going right back to the beginning of this, and I'm going to hit the space bar just to start playing, just to see how quickly that's moving along. And so that's moving along nicely. So we've got the next one and the next one looking good so far to me. Um, I do notice a little glitchiness and a little shaking on the gimbal sometimes since we've started using the Mavic 3 Enterprise. So we do have to do a little bit of smoothing afterward um, just to clear these things up. We also see a little black truck speeding through here. All right, this is looking good to me. So what's my next step? Well, one of the things that our clients has really liked and really enjoyed is us labeling the different properties. So up in the upper left hand corner if you look up here so we've got our show or hide the libraries then show or hide the media which is right in here and we also have show or hide uh, titles and generators so one of the things that our clients liked on this one was one of the title setups that we've been using for quite a while um, and that is 
an item called callout pop. So that's the name of it. It's a call out pop and it actually will track along with things. So you could track a mountain biker going by, or you could track where you want to label on these homes, for instance. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab, I've clicked on call out pop and now I'm going to grab the one that my clients like. There it is right there. So for some reason, they really like this little flag style one. And so what we're going to do is we're going to drag that onto the screen here. So now we have our call out pop and then we've got our video timeline below. So if I drag this just a little bit, you will see, oh, there's the call out pop. I get the idea now, but this isn't working right so far. We've got to set this up properly. So first thing I'm going to do with the call out pop is I am going to right click on this and change the duration. I only want five seconds. So I just typed in five seconds right in here and I'm hitting return. And you'll now see that that little, that little uh, simple little call out pop right there did in fact get shrunk. And so now I'm gonna zoom it back out here. And so this is moving along faster and it's shrunk down. So it should be much easier on me. All right, so I see where that's going. I'm gonna go back to the beginning here and there is a light box that you might not be able to see. Let me zoom in on this. You see this little light box here? So this light box is where we're going to position. We're going to put the anchor for this little call out pop on the corner of the building here. So I am going to bring this back and I'm just going to put it. So there's definitely some major contrast here. And for call out pop, at least you want some contrast for your anchor point. So that's looking good to me. And I think I'll probably want to put the text, the text position up a little higher, but let's see right about there. And I want to make sure this is highlighted at the beginning. Over on the right hand side for that call out pop, we see Stupid Raisins. That's the name of the company. We're not picking on anybody, but the name is Stupid Raisins. And they're the creators of this particular tracking call out pop. So what I'm going to do here on their little toolbar is I'm going to set my options and I want this set to high so that it locks on there. Now the next item we have is the actual play for the tracker. So we've got the position where the text is going to go. We've got our white box. Let's bring that back up here. For some reason it migrated itself and we'll see how this looks. I'm going to go over to that object tracker and I'm going to hit that track forward and it's going to pop up a little screen for me showing my little box where the anchor point is and that's perfect so great so what i'm going to do now in here is we see that we have the lorem ipsum we see the position here um i want to flip that so now it's more like a flag going off and so this is going to be labeled i'm just double clicking this site 42 and our visit date was october 15th, 2023. The other thing that we're going to do here, since we're in that one right now, let's select that, is we're going to go back here. And they don't like the orange, but they were big fans of Moss Green. So now we have changed that call out pop. And the one other thing that we're going to do in the Stupid Raisins window here is we are going to reduce the size of this just a bit here. We are, The scale right now is set to 300. I'm going to set that to 200. So now that's a smaller little flag going on right there. So let's play this back again and see. So there's our anchor point. There's site 42. All right, that's looking really good to me. So we've created our first call out. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to control C on that call out and I'm going to control V. And now you will see that we have two of these. So we've got the first one and now the second one. First thing I'm going to do for the first one is hit the V key, so the letter V, and that hides the other one for me. And now we can zoom this out and we can go to our second call out. So I want to work with the second one. And as you can see here on the second one, there is our little box right here um, that's going to help us find a higher contrast area. And I'm going to drag the position down here now and because we're going to have one up one down one up one down and let's go ahead and play through this and see how well this one works all right so that's sticking to it really nicely up but it slid right in the end there 
I don't like that. I'm hoping that I can, let's just broaden this up a little more to get a little more of that contrast. Let's play that tracker through one more time. Nice and locked in on that window for me almost the whole way. So that's great. So now we have that one, but um, let me see here. We had copied and pasted. So this is now site 43. So that looks good to me. And I'm going to go back to the beginning of my timeline and I'm going to turn on the first one. So that was for 42. And then we'll also see the second one. And normally I'm not talking this through. So this goes along a little quicker, but there's our first one. There's our second one. I don't like how the second one is working out there. So I'm going to go back up to stupid raisins and flip it back and see if that looks better to me. So here we go with the first first one playing through and there's our second one looks a lot better and then the third one we're going to do up top again so let's go ahead and we're going to copy that one so copy that and now i'm going to hide it and i'm going to hide the other one here and i am going to input the third one so there we go so now if we scroll back here let's see what's going on so 41 42 and now we're at 43. We want that one to actually, let's place that right about there. Let's bring the position up here. So there we are. I'm going to make sure this whole thing is highlighted again. And over on the right hand side, we're going to do that object tracker again. So let's click it. And so now it's showing us the third one and it's sticking out. That one slid again too. So you do have to play around with these occasionally. It's, you know, it's not a terrible thing, but um, to get it quite where you want it, let's see, now that's locked on there. Nope, still slid away to the next building. So we definitely do not want that. So one other thing I can do, I'll make this box a little bigger and we'll try playing this through again. And good, it's staying right there. All right, now that stayed where I wanted it. Perfect. Let's slide this over again. And so that was 42, 43. So this is site 44, October 15th, 2023. That's looking good to me. Let's go down to the lower left again. Let's select this one, hit the V key to unhide it, hit the V key to unhide that one. And let's zoom ourselves out and we'll go back to the playhead. And let's see how this looks. So 42 right up there, there's 43, site 44, and on site 44, I am not digging where it is. So once again, we'll go to the text panel and where Stupid Raisins is, and we'll do the flip again on that one. And now let's look at how that looks. So 42 and 43 and 44. All right, this is coming along nicely. And that's exactly how we want it to work. Now, this is how our clients asked to do it. We do have other tracking tools, so we could do other types of labels, 3D labels. We can do all of that. We did show the clients several versions of our flights through as we were initially setting this project up. And their favorite was the call out pop and how that presents. So they really like it a lot. Now, I've also gotten feedback from the clients because they utilize these videos, the stills we do, the 360s we do, the before and afters. They use these in marketing presentations um, to you know other developers, whoever they're working with. They also use these in presentations for venture capitalists who are investing in the projects. And they have told us repeatedly, this is one of the highlights of their regular meetings that they have is going through and seeing all the updates and changes to the properties and how we're presenting it to them. So I really appreciate the feedback from the clients letting us know this is absolutely working for us. Now, I'm not going to drag you through this whole thing because we've got several more buildings. So as you can see, I'm going to do notations on these. We also have some new uh, dig areas, and that's going to be for when they put the footings in and then put that pour the concrete. But as you can see, we've got that flight around there. And then on the inner side, we've got several more buildings. This is going to take a few. So what's going to happen is we're going to pause this video here, and then I will show you the final result um, once I get it all squared away. So we'll resume this video and I'll show you what the final result is on this pass through and on the overall video. I hope this is informative and is giving you some ideas 
of doing different video time-lapse work for your own clients and doing really custom presentations. I'll tell you what, it goes a long way when you let the customer know this was made for you and only you. All right, we'll see you in a moment. All right, everybody, here we are back on screen again. As you can tell, lost the hat for it, got a little cleaned up after uh, after our time out in the field. And let's just take a quick look at this. So during the time that I was away, I went through and I actually did the rest of the call out pops down here. So I'm just going to play this through really quick for you. So now you can see each of these. So while you were away and not seeing what was on screen, I was doing each of the call out pops. And, you know, they vary each time that uh, we go through these flight locations, because usually we've got new buildings popping up on a regular basis. But overall, there is how we've put this quick edit together. So we did a timeline. We did two different flights. So this is still part of the first flight. This is our 98 feet above ground level. And we're about to get up to the end of this one where we'll then switch to our 30 feet above ground level. We do have several other video passes that we do regularly, and we also have still image passes that we're still working out with the Mavic 3 Enterprise, still having some issues with setting up those types of waypoint missions, the still image waypoint missions. We'll talk about that on another upcoming video here as well, because we've been using the Mavic 3 Enterprise a lot, testing it out, really putting it through its paces, and definitely finding some little strange bugs here and there that I still have yet to resolve. Sorry, by the way, we're now on the pass. We're actually, we reversed the clip and this is the 30 feet above ground level that we're seeing going through. So once this is all done, I export this, I upload it to um, Dropbox, and then I connect the Dropbox to our See My Build where we can embed the video right in our See My Build website. Uh, to see a little more of that, pop by seemybuild.com and you'll see examples of some of the presentations we do. And so there we go. That's the uh, that's the whole quick little video here. Just a minute and 30 seconds. And like I said earlier in the video series, um, these presentations have been a huge selling point and capital generation point for my clients. They've let me know on a regular basis that we're actually helping them not only sell this community, but other communities that they're developing as well. So this is one of the custom things we do for our clients that we pop up over on See My Build. So go ahead and check that out. And as always, don't forget, we do have classes.azdrone.net. We have a full class bundle series that uh, encompasses over 78 hours of video training um, on building these types of websites, on flying types of missions, on utilizing autonomous flight apps, and utilizing the drones that we have here at AZ Drone. So if you'd like to learn more about our business and how we're doing things uh, for our drone clients, pop by classes.azdrone.net. We'll see you again real soon.